I'll just start sharing my screen now. We can give everybody a minute or two to get logged on before I jump into introductions. Hi, everybody. We're going to go ahead and get started in just a minute. I'm just going to give everybody a second to get situated and get logged on, and then we'll go ahead and start with some introductions. I think we're good to go. Looks like we had, yeah, looks like we had a couple more people join just now. So, all right, we can go ahead and get started. All right, so welcome everybody to the parent question and answer session. Thank you so much for joining us. I know obviously it's a little bit different joining us virtually versus being able to come and visit in person, but we're really happy to have you and we're definitely hoping to be able to see you on campus sometime soon as well. But this is going to be a great opportunity for you to get some of your questions answered. Um, and I'll go ahead and introduce everybody who is on the Zoom call as well. So here to answer your questions are myself and Morgan Kelly. We are both admission counselors in the admissions office. So we work with high school students and help them through the whole admissions process. Um, you may have heard from us in the past or from your child admissions counselor as well. Uh, so we're a good resource for if you have any admissions related questions. We also have Mark Bullock on the call. He is the Associate Dean of Students. And we have Heidi Freeman as well, who is the Assistant Dean of Students. So they can help with some student life campus related questions. Um, we've got all sorts of help all across the board today. So. And I'll just give a brief overview of some of the things that we're going to be touching on during our session. So we, ha we have a quick presentation that we're gonna go over and then we'll leave a lot of time at the end for all of your questions. So first off, we're gonna start going over our fixed tuition and fee schedule, um, as well as some of the benefits of that fixed tuition and how that is a way that we are investing in your students. So one thing that we're really proud of is the fact that we have a fixed tuition and Morgan's gonna go over that in a minute and what some of the benefits of that are. But a few years ago, we did significantly lower and fix our tuition, which means that it does not go up from year to year. And that's definitely one of the main ways that we do invest in our students. So we definitely wanna tell you guys a little bit more about that. We know a lot of people also have questions about the potential merger with St. Joe's that was recently um, made, was recently announced. <laughs> so we wanna make sure that we touch on some of those points as well. I know people have a lot of questions about that. So we wanna tell you guys what we know. And then we are also going to go over the value of a youth sciences education and some of the next steps for your student, um, especially for those accepted students who are looking to see what they need to do maybe after they put their deposit down and how they can get started on their youth sciences career. And then, like I said, we're gonna leave plenty of time at the end to answer all of your questions that you have as well. I definitely encourage people to put questions in the Q&A feature in the webinar and we will answer those as soon as we get the chance. Awesome, so I'm gonna be taking over to talk a little bit more about the tuition and fee and the fixed tuition and fee sequence like Sarah was talking about. So hi, I didn't introduce myself. My name's Morgan. I'm one of the admissions counselors. So to kind of give you an overview really quick about our tuition and fee, I'm not sure if you can see my cursor, but right here you can see broken down year by year by year is the undergraduate and then also pre-professional years of our six-year direct entry programs. So if you or your student 
were accepted into one of the traditional four-year programs, you're going to pay attention to this first line in the chart. If you were accepted, if you or your student was accepted into one of our six-year direct entry programs, which are physical therapy, pharmacy, or occupational therapy, you're going to pay attention to these years. These are the pre-professional or undergraduate years. And as you can see, they're broken down year by year. And these are on a fixed tuition sequence. And I'm going to talk a little bit about what the benefits of those are in a minute. But basically what that means is that these numbers aren't going to get any higher within those pre-professional years or for the traditional undergrad throughout the entirety of the four-year degree. So now you can see a more broken down sequence of the second half of the six-year programs or what we call the professional years. So that's in this chart over here on the far right. And the same thing, it's broken down year by year by year. And these are also on a fixed tuition sequence. And what that means is that these numbers also aren't gonna get any higher. So by the time your student, let's say they're a physical therapy major, by the time they get to their fourth year, three years from now, that won't be any higher than that. It'll still be at that $40,000 sequence and you're not gonna see any increases in that tuition. So basically what does that mean? A fixed and transparent price schedule means that you and your student will know the cost of the degree from the very first day. So it's really helpful when it comes to planning. I always feel like a lot of students and a lot of families always go into that first year of college only focused on that first year. You really wanna think about the big picture, especially if you were accepted into a six year program. Six years, that's a lot of time in school. That's a lot of time to be paying tuition. So definitely paying attention to how much the entire degree will cost instead of just the first year is really important for long-term planning. And then the reason that we're able to have a fixed transparent schedule is because we eliminated all tuition and fee increases. So pretty much most universities are gonna increase tuition anywhere from three to 7% every single year, which doesn't seem like a huge amount, but when you're putting it on thousands of dollars, it definitely starts to add up over four to potentially six years. So by eliminating all increases that would happen yearly, we're able to help students save thousands of dollars over the course of their education. And then also because of lowering and fixing the tuition, we're among one of the most affordable schools in our region specifically. So now I'm gonna go through a quick comparator calculator to kind of just really show you what the benefits of the fixed tuition sequence is. So I'm actually gonna start over here first. So to kind of break down the look of a four-year bachelor's degree program, so that would be the more traditional four-year programs, biology, neuroscience, one of those degrees. So over here on the left-hand side, you can see the University of the Sciences bachelor's degree program. So you can see the tuition and fee, they're combined into one price for us, is broken down year by year. And then we subtracted a scholarship. So this student was offered our $9,000 scholarship which is for every year of the four-year program, which brings the degree to a total of $74,000 at the end of four years. And then over here on the right-hand side, we're using a competitor university's um, tuition sequence. So we, we took real numbers. We didn't just make up numbers. We specifically picked out schools that are comparators to us, so with similar programs. So here we have the tuition broken down year by year, and then also the fees. So definitely pay attention when you're looking at all schools, including us, if the fees are included in that tuition sequence. Sometimes they're separate, sometimes they're together. So definitely pay attention to that as you're looking at schools. And then over here, we put in one of the more common scholarships for this university, which is $23,000 for all four years. And then you can see right here, the total amount for that four-year degree is just a little under $80,000. So down at the bottom, you can see the difference between a U Sciences and a competitor university is just a little under $6,000. So we're about $6,000 cheaper than that other school. So in the long term of everything and the, the basics, not a huge difference between the two, just with those generalized tuition. But you definitely want to keep in mind annual tuition and fee increases. So I'm actually going to come up to the top here and I'm gonna put in a 2.9% increase. So lower than the general average, but you'll tend to see a lot of 3% to 4%. We're just gonna put in a 2.9. So you can see that the numbers increased. So as you can see over here, 
after subtracting that scholarship, even with the scholarship remaining the same every year, the tuition is getting higher every single year. So now what was just a little under $80,000 in total is a bit over 80,000. Now the difference between a U Sciences degree and this other university is coming to about 13,486. So a bit bigger, almost like an entire year of school potentially, and then a little bit, little bit less. So definitely keeping that in mind when you're looking at increases, even a 2.9% does add a significant amount over four years. So definitely keep that in mind as you move forward looking at different schools. So now we're gonna do the exact same thing, but we're gonna do it with a six year direct entry program. So this is for the pharmacy program specifically. Same exact thing on this left-hand side is the U-Sciences sequence. We have the tuition and fee combined over here for the total of six years. And then this student was offered a $10,000 scholarship. So our scholarship is good for the pre-professional years, the first two years of the pharmacy degree. And then you can see down here at the bottom, for the total of the six-year degree, it comes to $179,000. And then the exact same thing on the right-hand side. So this is another competitor university, pretty much the exact same type of degree that we offer. And then we specifically put down their current tuition and fees. So here is the current tuition and then also the fees separately. And then definitely paying attention here, like for this university, the first year's fee is significantly higher than the sixth. So keeping that in mind, the tuition does change a bit depending. And then this student was offered a $25,000 scholarship for four years instead of two. So their scholarship lasts a little bit longer. And then as you can see, their entire cost for the six year degree is a little bit over 191,000. So come down to the bottom again, I know it's a lot of numbers, but I come down to the bottom again, you can see the difference between a U Sciences degree and a competitor university comes to a little bit over 12,000. So $12,000, definitely a lot of money, but in the grand scheme of things, not a huge difference between the two, but U Sciences comes to about a little bit over $12,000 cheaper than that other university. But we're gonna come to the top and add the 2.9%. Now it's significantly larger. So especially for a six year program, now you can see minus that scholarship over here that that tuition just continued to get higher. So now the difference between the U Sciences degree and the competitor university comes to a little bit over $34,000. That one's a lot of money. So the difference between the two has now added a significant amount onto that total tuition that you would be paying over six years. So even 2.9% definitely adds on a good chunk, especially over a six year program. So I know that was a lot of numbers and Excel sheets, and <laughs> you guys are probably tired of looking at them, but just to reiterate and sum up what we were talking about, many colleges are going to inflate tuition. So something you probably noticed while we were looking at the pharmacy degree, for example, is that the, the scholarship lasted four years instead of our scholarship that lasts two. However, that larger scholarship didn't end up actually reflecting the actual cost of the tuition. So always paying attention to a larger scholarship that might look nicer, but doesn't necessarily benefit as much as some other scholarships. So for every school that you're looking at, not just U Sciences, pay attention to that when you're looking at the length of the scholarship, the amount of the scholarship, but then how it compares specifically to the tuition and fee, and then also the annual increases and how large that increase is. So schools are able to mask the true cost of an education with larger scholarships that may not re retain their value over four to potentially six years. So New Sciences is offering a transparent model. You're gonna know the true cost of the education from the first day. So it's always really important to consider the bottom dollar and overall entire length of the education and not just the, four, the first year and really paying attention to what is the first year gonna cost and then what is the sixth year gonna cost and what is that gonna look like? But enough about me from tuition, I'm gonna hand it over to Sarah and she's gonna talk a little bit more about the offers that we have at U Sciences. Great, thanks Morgan. So a couple of the other costs and scholarships um, that you will have to consider for your students, uh, I'm gonna go over really quickly here. So the first thing would be 
room and board. So that's a separate charge outside of the tuition and fees that Morgan was just going over. Um, as far as housing goes for U Sciences, we do guarantee housing for the first two years that your student is on campus. And about 84% of our first year students reside on campus as well. So we are a mostly residential school. Um, one really nice thing about living on campus is that we do have a brand new residence hall for our first year students. Uh, if any of you have gotten the chance to take a tour in person or a virtual tour, you would have seen it. It's called the Living and Learning Commons. It's a beautiful building. So that's definitely something that your students can take advantage of. Um, another thing that I do want to point out is that we recently decided not to increase our room and board costs from last year to this upcoming fall. So our room and board for the fall is going to be 17,337. Um, some of you may have already gotten your financial aid packages in the mail and your room and board costs might say 17,500. So we did recently update that and uh, we ended up keeping it the same as it has been this year. So it is actually going to be a little bit lower than the number that is on the letter that you may have received. So if that is the case for you, you are going to be getting some updated financial aid information that does reflect that new room and board cost. Uh, but for those of you who maybe haven't gotten your financial aid package, that's something to keep in mind is that we did keep the room and board cost the same from this past year to the upcoming fall. And then another thing that U Sciences does offer is our variety of awards. So the first thing would be merit scholarships. That is what Morgan was using in her tuition comparison. So that $10,000 scholarship that our pharmacy student had in the example, that's one of our merit scholarships. We also offer a variety of other awards and grants. So for example, if your student is an athlete, they've been working with the coach for their sport on the recruiting process, they may be offered an athletic grant. Um, we also offer things like legacy awards. So maybe one of you watching attended U Sciences and you have a kid who's also gonna be attending U Sciences, which is super exciting. And they're gonna get a scholarship for that. Same if they have a sibling who's attending the university. And we do also offer honors awards. So that is for any students who have been accepted to our honors programs. And these are all things that students are gonna be considered for automatically when they apply. So we'll look at their application to see if they have any relatives who have attended U Sciences or if they are an athlete. Uh, so that's all things that your students aren't going to have to fill out any sort of extra paperwork for. And then we also do offer need-based aid. So I'm sure that you're all pretty familiar with the FAFSA by now, but that is how we determine um, students' eligibility for need-based aid. So I would definitely encourage uh, any of you who haven't filled out the FAFSA yet to go ahead and do that. You can find our school code on the slide here. And once you've completed and submitted the FAFSA and added U Sciences onto your FAFSA, you will receive your financial aid letter in the mail. Um, and if you have any questions about your financial aid letter, please feel free to contact your admission counselor or the financial aid office. And we can see um, one, if it's been sent yet, um, two, if we've received your FAFSA. So feel free to reach out to us if you do have any questions about that process. Awesome. So I'm going to take us back over and talk a little bit more in detail about the potential merger um, between us and St. Joseph's University. So I know a lot of you are aware of this already. Some of you may not be aware. Um, about a month ago, perhaps, maybe a little bit earlier, um, we made public with an announcement that there is work in the works for a potential merger between U Sciences and another local school, St. Joseph's University. So we're definitely excited about the opportunities and the possibilities of this. This is definitely a partnership and not um, what some people are calling a consumption of a university. So this is a partnership between us and St. Joseph's University. Again, this is potential. This is not happening for sure yet. It is just in the works and we wanted to make students and potential students aware of it in advance. So just to kind of answer a couple of your questions that we know that you have already, here's some things that we can guarantee about this potential merger between the two schools. So 
It's a continued commitment to quality focused in science and healthcare education. So you probably are aware, if you're not aware, St. Joseph's University is not specific in the sciences. We are specific in the sciences, and we still do intend to remain focused in science and healthcare based education. The fixed tuition and fee, so that thing that I just spent however long blabbing on about, um, will still be remaining. So the fixed tuition and fee schedule for the will be guaranteed for the duration of your program for current students and students accepted for the fall of 2021. So everything I just talked about will still be relevant to you and your student. So you won't have to worry about the tuition and fee completely changing should this merger go through. We will still be able to guarantee that fixed tuition and fee for you. Also any merit and athletic scholarship offerings for the amount and duration of offered and current students and those accepted to the start of fall 2021. Basically what that means is that your merit scholarships, athletic scholarships, all of the gift money you specifically got from us in merit and athletic will remain for the duration of your program. So for both current students and our accepted students in fall of 2021, we'll make sure that you still have those scholarships. So those aren't going to suddenly go away should this merger go through. And then finally, your students academic program and admissions benefits, so basically the direct entry programs will remain as well. So if any of you were worried, for example, about the six year direct entry programs, perhaps not being direct entry, don't worry, those will still be remaining, as well as all of the programs that we offer. None of our academic programs will be disappearing in this partnership. So your major, your program, your direct entry offer will be remaining even if this merger goes through. So no worries about that. And then finally, and then like we've mentioned before, I think I've been seeing a couple of people popping in, but if you have questions, feel free to throw those into the Q&A chat so we can go over those with you when I finish up the slide. But just to kind of go through some next steps with you, submit your FAFSA. So like Sarah said, submitting your FAFSA is definitely the next step if you haven't done it already. This will trigger the financial aid office to begin creating an award letter for you. So if you haven't filled out the FAFSA application, definitely, definitely do that as soon as you can. You can do that on FAFSA.gov and then we'll begin packaging a financial aid award letter for you. Then next, have your student join the Accepted Student Facebook page. So the Accepted Student Facebook page you can see is at this URL is a really great spot for students to start meeting each other. A lot of students will meet their future roommate on this page. And then also, I'm the one who monitors the page. I can definitely say this year's page has been significantly more active than other years. I think there's a big reason for that. It's because of COVID-19, but I'm not going to poo poo it at all. It's great. I've been loving seeing the interactions with the students. So if your student or you are not on the page already, definitely, definitely encourage you to get on that so students can start chatting with each other. Next, definitely attend an accepted student event as a family. So we do have two more accepted student days that are coming up both within March and then one in April. And then a couple of other specific events that you can see on our website as well by going to that URL of usciences.edu backslash ASE 2021. So if you're a student currently in the chat right now, you don't have to sit through these by yourself. If you're a parent in the chat right now, you don't have to sit through these through yourself. Definitely recommend gathering around the computer as a family and participating in the events that we have. Next, you want to submit your enrollment and housing deposit. So if you have decided that Youth Sciences is going to be the place for you, submitting your enrollment and housing deposit is the next step. And you can do that by going to the URL available there of usciences.edu backslash enroll. And then everything is pretty self-explanatory from that point. And the website will continue to move you through the steps. The only thing you're going to need is a code, an enrollment deposit code that you or your student received in the acceptance letter. So when you got your acceptance letter, there's going to be a code, a code in bold on the letter that you submit into the enroll website, then it will move forward with the rest of the steps. If you don't have your code, maybe you lost the letter, maybe you haven't received it yet, if you're not exactly sure how to get it, just send an email to the admissions office, we can get you that code for you. 
Then next, save the date for in-person and on-campus orientation and welcome days. So, so far we have a couple of dates up for the session options. So these are gonna be your orientation for our enrolled and deposited students. They will be in-person and on-campus. And so far we have a couple of dates available in June. So if you are a student who has submitted the deposit already, or maybe you're thinking about submitting the deposit, definitely recommend signing up for an orientation day as quickly as you can to make sure that we can get those ready to go. And then finally celebrate. It's definitely a really great, um, this is a great time. This is the perfect time. The first half of senior year for your students, I'm sure was extremely stressful to be perfectly honest, it's still a little bit stressful, but right now is the time where you get to just take a minute and celebrate all the college acceptances and all the accomplishments they've worked so hard for since they were freshmen. Take a minute, celebrate it. This is a big moment. And then you can get into college and start celebrating that part of their lives. So take a minute today or tomorrow to really celebrate this accomplishment. And then finally, connect with us. So we are gonna be available for the rest of the hour. So I think we're at, what, 7.28. So we have a pretty much a full half hour for questions. So you are more than welcome to ask us questions. But if you happen to think of something later tonight or tomorrow or next week, you can reach out to us whenever. So on the screen here is myself, Sarah, and then the rest of the admissions counselors you can reach out to us with any questions you have. You can text us, you can email us if you're not exactly sure what your next steps are or what you need to do next. Or if you just wanna talk a little bit more about the school, you can reach out to us whenever you like. But I'm gonna leave this screen up for just a couple of minutes in case anyone wants to take down those texting numbers. But I do see that a couple of questions are up in the Q&A. And then, like I said before, questions that any of you have, definitely utilize the Q&A box so we can go through those questions. We're going to try and get to all of your questions um, tonight, but if we haven't gotten to one of your questions, definitely send an email over to us. Contact one of the admissions counselors if you're aware of who your counselor is. Definitely contact us if we're not able to get to your question tonight. I also am not sure if we mentioned before, but if you have a question that is very specific to your student, try and keep your questions as general as possible. If you have a more private question or very specific question about you or your student, definitely reach out to your counselor. So you can even just send a general email to admit at usciences.edu and we can go over those more personal and specific questions if anything comes up that we need to talk more one-on-one -on -one with you about, about your student's financial aid or acceptance and all of that type of stuff. But I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing my screen so I can see the Q&A and we'll answer some of your questions. Okay, let me see. So I see a couple, awesome. So I see that some of my colleagues have already been answering some of your questions, so. Let me see. So we have one question here for, do scholarships offer flexibility in covering room and board versus tuition costs? Good question. So if you haven't received your financial aid award letter yet, there is some opportunities for housing grants depending on your specific uh, situation in your financial aid. So definitely um, make sure you're filling out the FAFSA if you haven't already. And then if you do need any additional help with financial aid, again, definitely email us. We do have some options available for you for each person's specific situation, whether it's helping to cost room and board or specifically tuition, definitely let us know. So send an email out to admin and we can help you out. Right. Oh, a lot of questions, awesome. Um, sorry, just trying to read them through, making sure any of them aren't <laughs> specifically personal questions. Okay, let me see. Um, if the merger goes through and an athletic sport is not retained after the merger, will an athlete's athletic scholarship be replaced by a merit award? That's a really good question. So as far as I'm aware, no scholarship is being taken away. So I did talk a little bit about that in the bullet points that we talked about in the merger. So I'm not exactly sure of the specifics of what is happening with athletics in the event of the merger going through. However, 
one thing I can guarantee is the award money that the student was offered. So if your student was awarded a scholarship specific to athletics, even if they will not be playing that sport anymore for whatever reason, if something with the merger goes through, that scholarship will still remain. So you won't have to worry about that scholarship then disappearing. So yes, um, that will not necessarily being replaced as a merit scholarship, but it's not going away. That scholarship will remain for the entirety of that, that student's offer. So whatever they were offered in athletics, that will remain. Uh, here's a question. Is there any type of band activities at U Sciences? I'm not sure about that one. Maybe do one of our dean, uh, deans of students, do either of you guys know anything about band activities on campus? So we do have a student run um, music club and that was, uh, it was started up by a couple of students who had marching band in their high school um, and they wanted to continue that in. So they, um, they play at some of our events and I think in, in the past they've played at some of the athletic events as well. So it's not, we don't have a, a formal music program but we do have a, a student organized um, music club. Very cool. Okay, next question. How long after we received the email saying that my daughter was accepted, will we receive the award letter if she qualifies? Good question. So um, I'm sure a lot of you have been experiencing throughout the length of the pandemic that mail is not as reliable as it <laughs> was before. So if you feel like you've been waiting a while for an acceptance letter, you're definitely not the only one. So on average, it takes about two weeks now, I believe, after being notified either by email or specifically from the admissions counselor of the acceptance. But if you feel like it's been taking longer than that, email us, send a text to your counselor. We may be able to send you a digital copy. So depending on how long it's been, we should have access to that letter. We usually don't have access to it immediately after notifying you of the acceptance, but if it's been two weeks since notification and you haven't gotten a letter in the mail, send an email. We should be able to pull a digital copy for you and be able to email that to you so you have the actual documentation of that acceptance. And that honestly goes for all mailing, same with financial aid. Um, if it's been a while, especially if you submitted your FAFSA a long time ago, uh, let us know, like send us an email and we'll make sure that we can get that out to you. We may be able to send you a digital copy or we can let you know if your financial aid letter hasn't been created yet. We are getting getting through them as quickly as we can. We're doing pretty good, we're getting there. Um, but if it, it may not have been created yet or it has been sent and it might be on its way, taking a while, let us know. We can probably send you a digital copy. Morgan, can I plug a question to you that I've seen a couple of times? Sure. We have a couple of people asking for students who are in programs such as the PharmD program that are six years long. They are wondering about our, if there are any scholarships that are available for the professional years of the program since the merit scholarships are only for the pre-professional years. Mm -hmm. Good question. Yeah. So we do offer scholarships that are specific to the professional years of the six year program. So basically all students have to do for that is apply for them through the financial aid office. So they all vary in amount. There's different types of amounts depending on the specific student, the specific program, but you can begin applying for those immediately. So you or your student can come in um, right, right at the beginning of freshman year, go into the financial aid office and begin filling out an application for graduate doctor professional level scholarships. So there are scholarships available. You just apply for them through financial aid and you're good to go. Yeah, and you can start doing that right away. So you don't have to wait until it's the end of the pre-professional period. You can start doing it right away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. Awesome. So I see next question. How do you sign up for the orientation days? Good question. I think, actually I'm not 100% sure if the registration is open yet for orientation, but it will be. All of that stuff is gonna be up on um, the Deposit Student Next Steps website. I'm not sure if a lot of that stuff is live yet. It may be, but definitely keep an eye out on the website. You're gonna be getting a 
nauseating amount of outreach from us pretty soon, especially as we get close to graduation day for your students. So when you get closer and closer to graduation day, that's when your colleges start bombarding you with do this next, do this next, do this next. So definitely keep a lookout for that. It might be available on the website as of now, if you go ahead and search for U Sciences deposit next steps or head to the admissions tab. But if it's not live yet, it will be soon and we will 100% be notifying you when that happens. Mm -hmm. But it'll be on the website. So you, you, as you register for this, same way you register for this, that's how you'll register for orientation too. I've also seen a couple of people asking about switching majors and more specifically if their student was accepted to a four-year program, if they are able to switch into a six-year program. So do you wanna explain that process a little bit? Yeah, so now is the perfect time to be asking that question, especially if your student is you know, determined to do a different program that they may have applied to in August, who knows what they may have changed their mind of by now. So if you're thinking about changing your major, Bet this is the best time to do that because it's really simple to do. So send an email to your admissions counselor, to your student's admissions counselor, or if you're not sure who that is, you can just send an email to the general admin um, email account, and then we can do that for you. Depending on what you're switching to, so exactly what that question of, so let's say you're a neuroscience major and you want to switch into physical therapy, for example, that's a six year direct entry program or pharmacy, which is also six year direct entry. Those programs have a slightly higher academic rigor and academic need for admissions. So when we're reviewing them, it's a slightly different process than reviewing for a traditional four year program. So what we're going to do is we're going to re review your student's application for that program. But also keep in mind if we end up doing that, so if you request to be re-reviewed for physical therapy, for example, and you were accepted to neuroscience, your student isn't going to lose their acceptance to neuroscience. So even if, like, let's say, worst case scenario, they are not accepted into the PT program, they still maintain that initial acceptance. So they could potentially switch their major and try again when they're in the university. So they're not gonna lose anything, but we will be happy to reevaluate. And then also depending on the major that you're trying to switch to, there may not be much reevaluation needed at all. So it could just be a two day turnaround between you emailing me saying, hey, I wanna switch from neuroscience to physics. And then I can do that really quick. So it's like really easy to do. So send us an email, we can walk you through that process. It could be a little bit of a longer wait if we have to reevaluate, but potentially could be very quick. Mm -hmm. Good question. Let me see. Next question. Can you share more detail about the youth sciences faculty and how is it compared to other competitors? That's a really good question. Um, I think, at least in my opinion, that coming from another university, I did not attend youth sciences, but I've worked here for oh, four years now, I think four years. So the length of my degree, I've worked here. Um, and I say, I'd say definitely the difference between competitor universities is probably the attention that students get. So talking to professors at different events like these and learning more about their connections with the students, you're definitely seeing a tight knit group here. So you're definitely seeing a lot of personal attention. A lot of that has to do with being a small college, a small university, and having that one on one attention with professors and academic advisors and your pre health advisors and all of that specifically. So I would say that's probably what makes our faculty stand out. They're all experts in their field. They know what they're talking about. They're bringing real world experiences into the classroom and they genuinely care about the students, both while they're here and after. Definitely recommend attending Accepted Student Day if you haven't already. A lot of the professors bring alumni and it's always kind of nice sitting with them as we wait for you guys to enter the chat and seeing them chit chat with the alumni they haven't seen in a year and how proud they are of them and they're in medical school and they're off in their careers. So you definitely see the passion in the faculty for sure. Let me see. Oh, here's a good one. Is there a monthly payment plan? So depending on what I'm assuming you're probably talking about tuition. And yes, 
There is a payment plan that you can sign up for. Um, depending on your situation, I believe the traditional payment plan is a 10 payment. So it's broken out into 10 payments. So not necessarily on a specifically monthly basis. Sometimes you can customize it to what you're specifically interested in or the university will notify you of when specific things are due. But you won't have to worry about paying the rest of the tuition, the out of pocket that isn't covered by gift aid or loan aid if you want to break it down into parts, you certainly can. So all you have to do is reach out to the financial aid or the registrar's or the bursar's office, and they can get you set up on the 10 month payment plan. So yes, there is a payment plan for tuition. And then also just in case anyone else um, may be wondering or has asked, we also do offer payment plans for the deposit as well. So if you want to break your deposit payment, into multiple payments instead of one lump sum, you can do that too. Just let us know and then we can get you set up with that. So if you're not exactly sure or if you just wanna break it up into payments, you're not sure how, reach out to your admissions counselor. We can get you set up on that payment plan. So yes, we do have payment plans for both tuition and for the deposit payment. Mm -hmm. Awesome, so let me see. Oh, here's another good question too that I think might be good for everybody. Um, one person had asked, is there a way to discuss financial aid with some sort of advisor? Um, and also they were wondering about possibly negotiating or whether or not the offer was finalized and kind of how they can handle that sort of a situation. Sure. So for financial aid, there's a couple of different options for you for who you might wanna reach out to. Honestly, one of the first places you can go to might be um, financial aid, obviously. You could reach out to the financial aid office. They are available for questions. We are also available for questions. We can answer most general financial questions and you're welcome to stay in contact with your admissions counselor. So we are pretty much with you hand in hand from beginning to end. So any questions you have about financial aid, you can reach out to your, your admissions counselor and we can walk you through the processes um, and then give you some next steps advice on what to do with financial aid. And then also if you're perhaps looking for any additional aid as well, there are a couple of options for you. So we always do recommend to students to look for more scholarships from outside of the university. So there's a lot of opportunity. I know the one website that we recommend a lot is called My Scholly. So it's M-Y-S-C-O-L-L-Y, -L I think. And I think the little symbol that pops up is a little elephant, I think. So if you see a little elephant, I think you're good. But it's a great place to sign up for third party scholarships. So if you're awarded any of those scholarships, just let us know. Reach out to financial aid, reach out to the admissions office, and then we can have that added on to your award letter. And then also, if you might be looking for more financial help, especially right now, especially with COVID-19, we're aware that a lot of people's situation, financial situation is significantly different than it may have been had we not been in the middle of a global pandemic. So definitely reach out to us. We do have some options when it comes to an appeals committee. So if that's something that you're looking for, reach out to your admissions counselor and we can help walk you through the process of how to begin filing an appeal if that's something that you're looking for. So yeah, lots of options for financial aid. And if there's anything specific you wanna talk about or a process you wanna help move along, reach out to your admissions counselor and we can help you one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Boop, boop, boop. And I think I've been seeing some questions being answered throughout too. So Gary, I don't know if everybody has access to the answered questions. Are they able to see those? They can answer, they can see the ones that are, um, that are open to everyone as long as they're not private. Okay. Um, any of the private questions are only available to those um, specific people. Okay, cool. So if there's any questions that may have been answered, you're more than welcome to check out those if maybe I didn't get to them. Um, and the rest of our staff and the, the Dean of Students offices are definitely available for some questions too. And then if there's a private question too, we may have answered those privately. So if you do have any private questions, we'll make sure to get to those. Okay, let me see. Let's try and get to some of these questions. Heidi, I saw a few questions come up about orientation um, and the plan for that. Can you give us a little more detail about kind of what that looks like in June and then the rest of the summer? Sure. So um, our orientation, we have three phases this year. So our phase one are the, um, the in-person dates in June. And um, I know we had those up at one point. 
Um, so those are just a little over half day and we're gonna start with a big group session with students and families all together. We'll give you some information about the university, some things to expect, and then we actually are gonna split you up um, for a little bit. And we have some special sessions just for parents on how you can help your student transition into college and also answer any questions um, about some of the forms that you have to fill out, all the health record stuff, like all that stuff that, that you probably are taking care of um, for your student. While we do that, your students are gonna go off and have some fun. <laughs> They're gonna get to know each other and explore the campus a little bit. And then we'll close out the session um, with, um, we're gonna have some local food trucks out on the lawn and you can explore the city or you can take a tour of the campus if you'd like. And so we have those um, through that week in June. and I. Don't remember the exact dates off the top of my head, but I know they were in there somewhere in the 20s. Um, through July, we're going to have some virtual touch points there. So we'll be doing virtual sessions for both students and for families if you still have more questions um, to, again, to, to orient the students to um, specific areas of the of campus life. So we'll have some with some of the um, student organizations and clubs. We'll have sessions about IT and how to set up your email account and all of that stuff. So we'll have different sessions all through July and into August virtually. And then on move-in weekend where is where we're gonna have a lot of activities for your students to do. So we'll start with the move-in and then that whole weekend, that Friday, Saturday, Sunday, again, more orientation to the university, a lot of fun stuff so that they can um, you know, make friends and build community and um, get them settled. We try to keep that Sunday before classes start a little bit lighter so that they can kind of settle in. Um, and then that Monday, they'll start their classes. Thank you, Heidi. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> so a question I see here is, for my child's third year, she cannot be housed on campus. Where would she be housed? Is that up to us to find housing for that year? So no. So we guarantee housing for the first two years. However, that doesn't mean that you can't live on campus for the third, fourth, or potentially fifth and sixth. So there still is opportunity to live on campus in our upperclassmen housing. All you have to do is apply for it. And a lot of times students are granted that because honestly, the more popular route for students is to move off campus. So you have two options. Students can either stay with us, remain on U Sciences property for third, fourth, or fifth, sixth year, or you can move off campus. So something that is really nice about our location in University City is that it's exactly kind of what it sounds like. It's just a city filled with university kids. So there's a lot of opportunity for off-campus housing. So a lot of the apartments in the area you're going to find it's mostly filled with college kids. So it's almost kind of like a college town right in this little nook of Philadelphia. So students don't usually have a hard time finding housing outside of the university. But if you do want to stay on campus, that is also definitely an option. So you're not totally on your own. There is lots of options for you. And I could probably add a little bit to that. Our Office of Residence Life also provides services for students who are looking to live off campus, you know, during their third year or above. Um, they host a virtual housing fair, or it was virtual this year. Usually we have um, a partnership uh, that provides on campus um, landlords and uh, potential rental locations, and they bring them on campus. So the students are able to almost attend like a housing fair. Um, and so that information and support comes also, also out of our residence life office. There we go. Morgan, we've gotten a couple of questions about the merger as well. I don't know if you wanted me to just rattle some of those off for yeah, you. Yeah, I was seeing a couple of those too. I'm like, oh, which one can I bring mm -hmm. up? Yeah, go ahead and throw those at me. Sure. So a couple of people have asked about whether or not if the merger goes through, if that would result in curricular changes or course requirements at all. Yeah, that's a really good question. So unfortunately, in this situation, I'm not 100% sure. So there is some questions or some situations that we are not privy of at the current moment. So like we said before, this is a potential merger. We are still in our U Sciences um, board as well as the board at St. Joseph's 
we're still in conversation. So I'm not 100% sure the exacts of things like curriculum changes, for example. The one thing we can guarantee, like we talked about before, is that we still will remain focused in science and healthcare. So science and healthcare medicine-based programs is still the focus of our university and will remain even if this merger goes forward. The specifics, I'm not 100% sure. I'm hoping we will know more, especially if the merger goes through, we'll be able to talk a little bit more about those specifics. But unfortunately, there are a couple of specific questions that we may not have the answer to right now. We're definitely gonna try and keep you guys informed as much as we can as we learn more. But as we continue forward, some of the details, we might still have some I don't knows, but that's okay. As we move forward, the one thing we will be guaranteeing for sure is that specific focus on science and medical health care. So if you are worried about us moving away from that goal, don't. That's still definitely the mission and the goal of our university, if you're moving forward with the merger. Mm -hmm. And two more questions that probably the answer is <laughs> similar to what you just said, but one person did ask whether or not the name of the university would change if the merger went through. And then somebody else had asked whether U Sciences students would stay on our campus or if they would need to go to St. Jam uh, St. Joe's campus for classes. Sure. So I can answer like half of both of those questions. So the first one with the name change, if the merger were to go through, we would become St. Joseph's University. However, the other half that I'm not sure about though is the colleges within the university. So we are as an umbrella, University of the Sciences with three colleges underneath us. So we do have Philadelphia College of Pharmacy, Samson College. So we do have a couple of other colleges beneath us those I'm not 100% sure about that's still within the conversation of if those names will remain or if they will change. However, we will all together as one be underneath the umbrella of St. Joseph's University, as well as for anything underneath it. I'm not sure about yet. That's still part of the conversation moving forward. But that is one thing that I know. So and then Morgan, just real quick to jump in there. We do have guarantee that um, the Philadelphia College of Pharmacy and the Sanson College of Health Sciences will continue oh, cool. um, with the merger. Um, so those are two names that we realize there's a, there's a strong history with, and both of those would continue um, as part of St. Joseph's University um, oh. if we were to go forward with the merger. Cool, I didn't know that, that's exciting. <laughs> cool, thank you. All right, cool, so I was able to answer like, like the 80% of that question, perfect. So as for the other question specific to the campus, Still kind of not 100% sure. What I can answer, however, is that our campus will remain. So our campus is not going away. We are not all collectively moving over to St. Joseph's campus um, over in the suburbs. We, our campus is still gonna be here. A big reason for that is because we have facilities that St. Joe's does not. So we have a lot of labs and a lot of simulation labs and things very specific to the sciences and medical health sciences that St. Joe's does not have on their properties. We definitely don't want to lose those and we won't be. So our campus is not going anywhere. As for the specifics of if you're going from one campus to the other, if you're going to be spending specific years at one campus, I'm not 100% sure, so I don't want to say for sure because I don't know it in concrete. But as we move forward with more conversations, we'll know much more concretely moving forward. But as for right now, I'm not 100% sure. What I do know for sure is that campus is remaining. The University of the Sciences property is not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Oh, I just saw a question that I do know the answer to of can we physically visit campus? Yes, you can. So actually, yeah, yeah, woo, yay. <laughs> so excited, I think I, I stepped foot on campus for the first time in like three months this weekend, it was thrilling. Um, but definitely, definitely, yes, that will be coming up soon. So there's a couple of options for you. One is one that we've been offering for a while. You can come visit campus on your own. 
So feel free to stop by campus and do a self-guided tour. You're gonna to see signs all over campus that have little QR codes on them. You can scan those with your phone and actually do a virtual self-guided tour. So you can walk through campus and then see the inside of each building that you're standing in front of virtually on your phone. However, yay, um, starting really soon, we're gonna be having uh, in-person tours. So we will be offering uh, guided in-person tours really soon. I actually think the registration link went live already. It was live when I checked it. So feel free to check out, I believe the URL is usciences.edu backslash visits. You head over to that website and then you scroll down a little bit. There's an option for in-person tours. Click on register. There's going to be a couple of guidelines and rules to make sure that everything's staying safe. So definitely pay attention to those rules of keeping track of how many people will be on campus, how many people you're bringing, making sure you're wearing a mask, and then also keeping track of your health as well before you arrive to campus. However, you will be able to take a guided tour. And if you want to, myself or one of my colleagues will be available in the office to go over any questions that you have face-to-face. -face. So if you do have a question and you wanna go over anything with us, we will be physically there in the office, which will be cool. I haven't been back in the office since November, so I'm excited. <laughs> Morgan, I know we only have a couple of minutes here, oh, um, but I have, oh seen, <laughs> I have seen a handful of questions about internship opportunities or clinical opportunities, professional connections that the school has. So if you wanted to kind of do a brief overview of some of our connections or the different opportunities that our students have. Sure. So pretty much we have a lot of opportunities when it comes to stuff outside of the classroom. So internships, shadowing opportunities, um, perhaps in your later years of six year programs for your clinicals. Um, there's lots of options when it comes to either pulling on the connections of your professors or utilizing our career ser counseling services. So there are opportunities for students to look for things on their own. So if you wanna look for any opportunities on your own, you can do that, but then also you have the support of the university. So you can either choose to work with our career services and they can help you with internship opportunities for looking for jobs after you graduate, but then also utilize your professors. So the professors in these programs are experts in their field, like we keep talking about, and they're very good resources when it comes to looking for opportunities for internships, shadowings, job opportunities, especially if you're looking in the local area. So if you wanna stay in Philly, so if Philly is your goal, you're coming here and you wanna stay here forever, you certainly can. And you have a lot of opportunities for connections here through our university, through our professors. And it's definitely something we encourage students to take part in. So kind of when I was talking about how, I think what sets our faculty apart from others is that we have this tight knit connection. That tight knit connection is really gonna help when it comes to looking for those opportunities and having them help you search for them if you're not exactly sure where to start. So you're certainly not alone when you come for looking for internships, you have a university wide support system for that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And, oh, wow. Yeah, it's eight o'clock. <laughs> that went quick. I see we still have a good chunk of questions, which is awesome. Thank you guys so much for all of your questions. And if we weren't able to get to one of your questions today, like we mentioned before, email us. So stay in contact. If you do have any questions, we're happy to go over any of this with you later on. So if we weren't able to get to your question today, definitely reach out and we can go over that more one-on-one -on -one with you. And then also if something comes up later, maybe you weren't able to think of a question right now, no problem. You can still reach out to us and we're happy to get to those for you. Morgan, do you want to try and do a lightning round and get some uh, through some of these last remaining questions? I know that's what I was looking for. I'm like looking, I'm like, let me see, where can I, blah, 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 blah. So do you want to talk about average class size real quick? Sure. So honestly, average class size is gonna differ depending on the program that you're in. And then also the year that you are in. So when you're a freshman in your first year, you could potentially be in some of our lecture halls which can fit up to about 100 students, but never really fit up, never fill up to that much. We're definitely a small school. So you definitely are gonna see smaller classroom sizes 
And depending on which class you're in, you could be in classes that are in larger lecture halls, but mostly you're gonna be in smaller level classes, anywhere from 30 students in those classrooms. So not huge amounts, depending on your program. If you're in a more popular program, there could be a larger amount of students in there. But if you're in smaller populated programs, you're definitely gonna see smaller classes. So if you're looking for small classroom sizes, especially for the later half of your program in your fourth and uh, your third and fourth year or fifth and sixth year, whichever, um, you're definitely going to see smaller classrooms. So you're definitely going to get that nice one on one interaction with professors. If your student is someone who wants that personal connection to help them with their curriculum, help them with how they're doing in class, you're definitely going to see that personal connection with the professors. So I always say I went to a small school. And I think the best example of a small school is I skipped a class once, which I don't recommend doing. Don't skip class. But I skipped a class once and I was walking across the quad and my professor lifted the window up really quick and then yelled out into the quad like, Morgan, where were you? I'm like, oh, uh, I was in my car listening to music and he's like, you weren't in class today. That's a small school. So small school is going to know when you don't show up to class, but it's also benefit because it means that you're going to have those connections and your support system in your classroom. So definitely on the smaller side with the potential for some lecture halls, but not an insane amount and usually in your first year. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Morgan. And then Mark, I have two questions for you about residence life. Um, so we have a question about how many students are in one room in the residence hall. And then we also have a question about move-in um, and COVID tests and if they're required before a student moves into campus. All right, can you hear me now? Yes. All right, sorry about that. I was, I was responding to questions and I couldn't get back to the, the mute button or anyway. Sorry. Right. No, no, not a problem. All right. So the, the first question again, or was regarding the number of students, our residence halls are designed for double occupancy uh, currently, and that's during the, you know, the normal operations. Um, again, depending on the guidance from the city or state, um, that may change, but our, our plan is to resume the normal op operations um, and provide double occupancy rooms. Um, and then uh, currently there is no plan to require uh, testing for all students. There are some populations that we do provide testing for or require testing, um, but it's not currently in our plans for mandated testing for all students. Awesome, thank you, Mark. I think one question that I want to point out uh, that someone asked is when living in the dorm, will you get to meet or choose your roommate? Uh, definitely wanted to use that question. Definitely promote to you guys to have your students join the accepted student Facebook page if they haven't already. That is, um, at least from what I've heard from other students, the best place to meet other students. So they're constantly chit chatting in there. And that's a great place to meet potential roommates, make some friends, especially right now when you can't really be together. Sometimes students were meeting each other at accepted student day, which obviously isn't really in the cards right now. So that's a really great place to go to help choose a roommate ahead of time. A lot of our students have met each other through the Facebook page before. Um, and then also you can have a roommate chosen for you uh, through the um, uh, questionnaire that students do before they move in. So again, for roommates, if you're looking to meet or choose a roommate yourself, if you don't know someone already, Definitely, definitely, definitely recommend getting on the Accepted Student Facebook page. It's a great place to meet each other, especially right now when there aren't an insane amount of opportunities to do so. So definitely do that. There's also a residence hall portal that you'll fill out, um, which will allow you to kind of connect with roommates that way. You can mm -hmm. fill out some questions um, and then students can kind of match each other. We did host a webinar last night with housing and dining where our uh, director of housing and residence life uh, went through that process a little bit. So if that's something you're interested in learning more about, um, you can watch the webinar um, that we hosted last night and it will be up on the website um, within the, by the end of the week. And then Morgan, can you or Sarah talk about federal work study? We did get a question about what that was. 
Sure, yeah, I could take that. Um, so federal work study is a part of financial aid award that you can qualify for through the FAFSA application. So when you fill out the FAFSA, you could potentially be qualified for federal, federal work study. What a federal work study is, it's a little bit different than a loan or a scholarship. It's something you can choose to take by taking on a job. Some jobs on campus are specific to students who are awarded federal work study, and then they will get that money through their time in that job. Then what they do with that money is up to them. So if they want to put it towards their tuition, they totally can. If they want to put it towards the indirect costs that are on the award letter, so those could be textbooks. They could be dinner with friends or paying for the SEPTA key card that they use to get into Center City for the day. So it's kind of up to them how they spend that money because it is a paycheck that they will get throughout their job, but does specifically come from their qualification on the FAFSA application. So definitely get in contact with us if you're not sure if you qualify or if you're not sure how to uh, reach out. You, your student can actually start applying for a job pretty early, usually during orientation is when they talk about um, the job openings for federal work study and you're able to get on contact with that. A couple of offices are available for federal work study for students to work in different areas on campus. So that's kind of what that is. It is a job on campus that's qualified for through financial aid. And then that money is up to your student to use either for tuition, direct costs, or indirect costs, whatever their, their choice is. Mm -hmm. And then there's a question about the recommended course load for a freshman. Um, I don't know if um, you want to talk about that or someone else would be able to talk about that. I mean, I could take that one. So on average, I think the course load credit amount is supposed to not go over 18 credits, I believe. Um, trying to do, I was a communications major. I didn't do math in my head. I'm like, how many classes is that? <laughs> but um, that's also something that you would work with with the academic advisor. So to give you an idea about the freshman year, the first semester, your student is gonna get their classes picked out for them. So that schedule is going to be created for them for that first semester. So they don't have to worry about that fight to get those classes, about figuring out what they need to have for that first semester. That one's going to be created for them. Then moving forward, they can create their schedule on their own. So it'll be picking out courses, working alongside with an academic advisor to make sure that they know where they're going. So we always recommend meeting with an academic advisor at least once a semester to figure out what that schedule should be. So for the first semester, as they're beginning in the fall, they won't have to worry about the actual schedule and course load. That's gonna be kind of made for them. And then any changes you might wanna make you can reach out to academic advising at that time. But then after the first semester, it'll be a combination of your student making those choices along with the academic advisor who can point them in the right direction to make sure that they're taking the right courses, taking them at the right time, and then also not overloading themselves with courses, especially depending on the program that you're in. So definitely making sure that students are taking on a manageable course load and not going overboard with how many classes they're taking or making sure that they're taking enough classes. So the average workload is going to be something that they can work with with their academic advisor to make sure they're taking the right classes at the right time in the right amount each semester. Mm -hmm. But numbers wise, it's like no more than 18 credits. <laughs> And then Morgan, AP credits real quick. Hmm, good question. Yes, AP credits. Uh, yes, definitely AP credits. AP credits and dual enrollment courses. So if your student was an AP student or if they were taking dual enrollment classes at another four-year university or at a local community college, 
make sure you get that stuff over to us as quickly as possible, especially once you decide that you want to enroll at U Sciences. So making sure that you have all that stuff in. For AP credits, it's making sure that we have those test score results in and filed at the school. So we want to make sure that we're looking for test results on the AP test of a four or a five, um, and that will generate it coming over as credit. You can actually go to our website. I think if you just Google U Sciences AP credit, the very first link that's going to pop up is going to bring you a list of all the AP credits that we accept and then the test score we're going to look for. Generally, it's a four or a five on the test for AP, but make sure you get those that paperwork over to us. When you finish that test, get the scores over to us so that we can then evaluate it for credit. Same thing with dual enrollment courses. So if your student took any credits at another university while they were in high school, definitely make sure that transcript from that college or community college is sent to us and have it done throughout the summer. So when they're ready after they deposit throughout the summer, you can take your time, but the earlier the better, send that into us and then we will evaluate each individual credit to see how it can come over and transfer into you sciences we're not able to start that transfer process until we have the official transcript. So definitely make sure you get in your AP test result paperwork and your official transcript if you took dual enrollment courses. Those are always the bane of my existence in the summer. So definitely, definitely get that paperwork in. And again, like I said, in the coming weeks, in the coming months, you're, you're, you're gonna get a nauseating amount of contact from us read the stuff that we send in because we might be asking for specific materials to be sent in, um, some additional things we might need you to do moving forward into the next steps after the deposit. So definitely, definitely pay attention to that outreach, especially if we're out reaching out for specific materials such as a transcript or AP scores. Yes. All right, and then we got some questions about internships. Um, so I wanted to take a chance to see if we can, uh, Mark and Heidi, if you could just um, briefly talk about those opportunities on campus and our career services office and what that provides students. All right, so Oop, you, you were muted again. <laughs> Mark, do you want to go ahead? There we go. All right. Sorry about that. So our Office of the Career Services um, is actually available and they actually encourage students to start the career exploration process uh, really early in their uh, careers. I know many of our students come to use sciences with a career in mind. Um, however, you know, a lot of students don't know how many different subspecialties are available for a student, let's say in pharmacy. Um, and so the career services offices actually has a number of tools that can help students kind of hone in on some other interests. Uh, they offer uh, career fairs, um, you know, with an, all the major companies in our area and national companies. Um, actually, we just did, or we just received an announcement about this year's virtual career for, fair, um, since, you know, obviously we are responding to the ongoing pandemic. Um, it's also a lot able to connect students, you know, first year students, second year students with a large alumni network, um, which is one of the great reasons and benefits for starting the process and getting involved with career services early. Um, and so, uh, yeah, and also one of the other tools that they have is a professional inventory. So um, many students, you know, they may come to U Sciences, think they want to be, you know, a, a PT or a PA, and then, you know, their interest in, interests change over the course of their career. Um, and so going to career services can help students kind of figure out their next path. Um, so yeah, did I miss anything, Heidi, or? I just, I just wanted to point out too that any of the students in the professional programs will have their clinical placements arranged by the program. So, um, you know, in PT, OT, pharmacy, PA, they don't have to worry about finding their own placements there. Those, and I know many students who end up working with um, one of their placement sites when they graduate. Um, and 
in a lot of our departments really our faculty really have a lot of connections in the local area so um, depending on what your student is interested in their faculty advisor can probably find them something somewhere we've had students intern um, at schools we have had students intern at the philadelphia zoo some of our biology majors have, have been there over the summers um, so we do have a lot we have a, a lot of opportunity in the city and we do have a lot of faculty connections too And then I see three more questions in the Q&A that I think I may um, recommend uh, to ask at Accepted Student Day. So I see three more questions. Two are very specific about pharmacy, about um, how many students in the program, and then how, what they're doing in prior years, some specific percentages for job placements in pharmacy. And then I also see some questions about exact scholarship amounts for professional years. Those are really great questions. Great questions that I'm not sure the exact answers to, but I definitely recommend attending the accepted student day if you haven't already. So if you have a very specific question, numbers wise, scholarship wise, percentage wise, you're going to learn all that stuff from the faculty themselves at accepted student day. So I think the next one is March 20th, I believe, which is on a weekend. It'll be virtual as well. So it'll be similar to this, but it's going to be a little bit more one-on-one -on -one and specific to the program that you're looking for. So especially for some of these questions that I see that are specific for pharmacy, definitely recommend attending the pharmacy session at Accepted Student Day. The professors there are going to know a lot of more specific numbers than I would. So they'll be able to walk you through that process, talk a little bit more about the specifics of the program, job opportunities, more information about those types of things, as well as scholarship information for the graduate levels, the professional levels. So for those specific questions, I definitely recommend signing up for Accepted Student Day on March 20th. There's also one in April if you're not able to attend that one, and you can get all of your major specific questions answered right from the professors. Mm -hmm. All right, I think now we're going to uh, head up and wrap up now. Uh, thank you, Morgan, Sarah, Heidi, Mark, for all your support and all your um, all the answers to the questions we had from the students today. Um, for our students, if you do have any questions after today, feel free to give your admissions counselor uh, an email, a call. You can set up an appointment with them. They're always willing to answer any questions you do have, no matter how big, no small. Um, those questions are. Um, so thank you everyone again for attending and have a great rest of your night. Have a great night, thank everyone. Thank you, everybody. Howdy.